Woo! We like this holy smoke. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you wouldn't mind just giving me your attention for just a few minutes. I'm not trying to stop anybody from praying. If you keep wanting to pray, you're not going to affect me one bit. When I received the wonderful invitation to come to this great camp meeting in this district, I was very, very honored. And uh, it's just a high watermark for me in my life. And uh, I appreciate teamed up with my good friend, Gordon Poe, we, we are like the team of co and rupt Beep and bop. And every one of these, like you said, every one of these messages has been out of sight, man. It's just been phenomenal. And, uh, and, and yet, and yet, and yet, and I'm not blowing smoke, and yet, two weeks ago, the Lord began to deal with me about something I'd never preached in my life. And, and I felt like he said to me, it's for the camp meeting. I said, okay. I said, I'll take it out there then and see what happens. And thank you. Thank you, Brother Story. Thank you, District Board. Thank you for all the politicians. Thank you for all the non-politicians. For my friend, Morel Cornwell. Thank you. Everybody's been so kind. Thank you for the food, the room. Everything's been great. And, uh, and I'm just honored to be with you. Now, look, I, I, I can't do anything. Now, he's got all these kind of gifts in him. I ain't got no gifts in him. I'm just a voice. Okay, that's all I am. But, but I feel like the Lord has given me something to speak to you about. And so now you, you can either stand there or just go, go back a little ways. And uh, why don't you just move back a little bit, okay? Or just go, go, go back to your safety zone for just a second, okay? And I'll, I, I won't be long. I don't need to preach. I... I, I I'm not on some Pentecostal ego. I don't need to preach. Okay? But I feel like the Lord's given me something. And, and I want to direct your attention to a couple of portions of Scripture while you, if you'd be so kind as to remain standing or stand. And, uh, and I'm going to 1 Samuel. Brother Judd, always so great to see you, my dear friend. So appreciate you. And... Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1. Now, now I don't want to be rude. I'm naturally rude, okay? I have, I have to work at being nice, okay? But, but, but we've boogalooed and we've jammed and shoot and we've done the moonwalk. We've done everything. But it ain't no time when to get ready to preach for you to just get quiet. And, and so... And I'm not trying to turn this into a cheerleading thing, but I just feel like you just need to be on your tippy toes spiritually, okay? Let, 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 let me just read this scripture to you. I'm from 1 Samuel chapter 1 and uh, verse 2. And he had two wives, and the name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children, and Hannah had no children. Now, I've got to paraphrase this because we're running late, and... and, and I just want you to get this. Uh, verse 4. When the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave Penina's wife and to her sons and daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And he did so year by year when he went up to the house of the Lord. So she provoked her. And so then she wept and she did not eat. And so, so Elkanah says, you know, what are you all ticked off about? Why are you sucking your thumb? What's your problem? And I'm not better to you than ten sons? Of course, the answer is no. I, I'd like to have a bambino. I'd like to have a bubula. I said, this other chick you got is popping them out like a rabbit, man. She's putting them out there one right after the other. She's, I ain't had a kid yet. And I want to have a child. Well, 
So he gave her lots of gifts, but the gifts wouldn't take care of it. So the Bible said she went to the temple and she began to pray. And she was, verse 10, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore and vowed a vow and said, Lord, if you would on the affliction of thine handmaiden and remember me and not forget thy handmaiden but will give unto thy handmaiden a man child I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor come upon his head now that's all I'm taking out of there now I'm going to one more scripture in the book of uh, Mark Mark chapter uh, if I can find it I got so many notes chapter 1 okay okay chapter 1 and uh, 29, and forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with Jason. Simon's wife's mother was sick of a fever, and a nun, or right away, they tell him of her. He came and took her by the hand, lifted her up, and immediately the fever left, and she ministered unto them. And even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and then that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many, listen to this, that were sick of divers' diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devil to speak, because they knew him. Okay? Now I'm going to try to put these two together. I want, I want, I want to help you. I, want, I, I really do. I want, I want to help you. And, and, and you, you got to hear what I'm fixing to tell you. If you don't remember anything else, remember this expectation is the birthplace for the miraculous you got to expect something is going to happen while I was praying the the Lord just brought these little tidbits to me and he said tell my people that unpracticed truth is no better than false doctrine. No, no, you, no, you, you, you guys didn't get it yet. We blow off all the time. We got the truth. We got the truth. We got the truth. Wait a minute. Unpracticed truths no better than false doctrine. We not only have to have the truth, we've got to experience the truth. One more little nugget, and then I'm going to start preaching. So I felt the Lord spoke to me in the hotel and said, Tell my people, contrary to what they think, my promise is as powerful as my presence. You see, we want to feel His presence, but God wants us to believe the promise. Now, 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 to give you a scripture and verse for that, well, Lord, bless the preaching, teaching, help me to be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. To give you a scripture and verse for that, the Syrophoenician woman came up, and she wanted the devil cast out of her daughter, and he turned around and said, go thy way. The devil's gone out of thy daughter. Now watch. He didn't go with her. He didn't let his presence go. He said, I'll tell you what, my promise is as powerful as my presence. Now, you're not getting it yet. We Holy Roller Pentecostals make such a big deal out of feeling the presence of God. But I'm going to tell you something. You can have a miracle and not feel anything. You think I'm kidding you? Try it one more time. The nobleman came down and wanted to get his boy healed. Jesus would not go with him. So what he said, I'll give you something as powerful as my presence. I'll give you my promise. Go thy way, thy son liveth. You can get a miracle long distance here tonight. You can, woo, you can get God to heal family members that are away right now. You can get something from God right now if you can just believe his promises. Yes, I love to feel the presence of God. I'm feeling the presence of God now, but I'm just as saved when I don't feel it. I, I, are you hearing me? He said, yeah, I'm not going with you. I'm not giving you my presence. I'm giving you my promise. My promise can do what my presence can do. 
Do you understand that this Pentecostal movement, I don't want to be rude or crude, but I want to be real plain with you. We are pregnant with promises. Yes, we are. We are pregnant with divine promises. Do you understand that Israel was pregnant with promises and never went into the promised land? They died outside the promised land, waving their promise and saying, but we've got a promise. We've got the truth. We've got God. That doesn't matter. If you don't act on the promise, the promise doesn't help you. Now, 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 just bear with me just a minute. I'm going to go as fast as I can. I need to tell you what I'm preaching on. The blessing. The blessing. Oh, God. Of being sick of something. You, you, you missed that one. I'm going to try not to preach to you preachers tonight, okay? There is a blessing of being sick of something. Now, I read the dictionary, and the dictionary said there's two interpretations to that. One is to be ill, to have a disease, to be not well. Okay, fine. The other one is to be disgusted about, to be frustrated over, to be agitated, to be angry about a situation or a circumstance. Man, there is a blessing when you decide to get sick about something. I, I, I appreciate the six of you that are clapping your hands. Thank you. You may be seated. I can't see because I'm half blind. I got that uh, police thing on here. Have, have we had, I can't see. Do we have some sweet black people? We, we have some black folks here right now. Could you raise your hand? Okay. I'm going to talk to you for just a few minutes so you can run the aisles. You ready? You sweet black people ought to thank God for a woman named Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a white guy because she said, I'm sick of this stuff. I'm sick. And she started a movement that changed the whole world. You can get sick about your situation and bust a move and turn around and say, I'm coming out of this. I don't know when I'm coming out of this. I don't know how I'm coming out of this, but I will come out of this. You, 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 you didn't sit down. A, a, am I doing good yet? I, where's, my, where's all my sweet black brethren and sister? You, you ought to be shouting right now and give God thanks for the guy named Martin Luther King. Because Martin Luther King stood up one day and said, I'm sick of this segregation. You laugh all you want to. But the British government was defeated by a bald-headed guy named Mahatma Gandhi who turned around and said, I'm sick of this culture stuff. I'm sick of being mistreated because I'm an Indian. They threw him off a train. He was a college professor. They threw him off a train because he was brown. He was almost black. He was Indian, and the British wouldn't put up with it. But he read, he led an insurrection that brought Britain to its knees. You have the possibility right now to get sick of what's going on in your life, get, get sick of what's going on in your church, get sick of what's going on in your ministry. Sit I'm trying not to preach to you guys. Sit, sit, sit down just a second if you want to. You understand? It's a blessing when you get sick of something. Now, 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 now for those of you that are not shouting and not clapping, let me get on your level. Flesh. Anybody besides me ever got sick of a leaky faucet? A hose that don't spray? I just, I just flipped my lid the other day. I bought a brand new set of, of uh, floor mats from a cool 64 Galaxy, and I bought a cheap kind because I wanted to save money. But the dumb thing didn't have them little projections on it, and every time I got in the car, the piece of junk slid to the side. And then when I went to step on it, it was on the brake. Then I went to close the door, and it was hanging out the door. And in my great Christian calmness, I said, Ah! I'm sick of this! 
And I went down to the automotive place, took my brand new mats, gave it to this schmo and said, Merry Christmas. Give me another set and put it in there. Let me tell you what I'm trying to show you, what God told me. Tell my people, nothing will change until you're willing to confront the issue. As long as you and I keep tolerating something, we are going to be held hostage by it. But when you finally reach the point and say, I'm sick of this. I'm, I'm sick of the way I am. I'm sick of my level of spirituality. I'm sick of my prayer life. I'm sick of my inconsistency. When you get sick of something, there's going to, something's going to change. Yeah, uh, I can't ask you to sit down because you're all going crazy. Maybe, maybe you don't understand. Anybody besides me have an extension cord that doesn't work half the time? You know what we do? We're more given to repairing something than replacing something. Anybody besides me have an electric drill and half the time it works and half the time it don't work? And finally in your Christianity you say, yeah! And you just go to Home Depot and you buy a new one. Now, now you laugh because you say, yeah, wait a minute, I've had a leaky faucet, I've had a leaky roof, I've had a leaky sink, I've had, a, I've had all kinds of stuff that I tolerate because we are more given to toleration than confrontation. Now, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I want to tell you real nice, if your church is dead as a hammer, it's time to stop tolerating that. It's... It's time to get sick of that. If you're not having a move of God in your life, it's time to get sick of that. Just like Hannah of old, who got sick of being barren. You know what she did? Here's the key to this camp meeting. She summoned the supernatural. That's what God is telling the Texas district. It's time to summon the supernatural that God might do for you what you're sick of. Woo! Woo! Are you finished? I'm done. You you get it? She she got sick of Penina popping out them kids like a rabbit. Shikabaka, shikabaka, shikabaka. Every time they turn around, they had relations. Boom, she's pregnant, she's pregnant. They have relations with her. Barren, barren, barren. Couldn't do nothing about it. Her husband said, here's some gifts, here's some money, go to Kmart, have some fun, fine. Said, she wants a bubble, she wants a baby. So he can't help her because he ain't functioning right with her. She's giving that chick all the kids she needs. He ain't helping her. There's something wrong in her body. So she says, I know what I'll do. I'll get desperate and go to God. There's sometimes you can't go to your friend. You can't go to your prayer partner. You... You can't buy a Jeff Arnold tape. You can't buy a CD somewhere. You just got to pull down the blinds, turn off the phone, get on your face and say, Hey, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this. Woo. Woo. Don't keep tolerating stuff that ain't working. I ain't no sense asking you to sit down. You people have lost your mind. You know what? Some of you people that do your Mount Rushmore impersonation, you need to get sick of that. You, you come to church every Sunday. You need to get sick of the fact that your praise ain't working so good. You, get, you need to... You ain't going to change jobs till you get sick of it. You're not going to make a missionary commitment till you get sick of not paying for it. You got to challenge some areas in your life that just ain't working and put your foot down and say, come hell or high water. I am sick of this. I am not going to tolerate. I am going to bust a move. I'm going to experience a change. I'm going to get a hold of Jesus. Woo! 
give me, give me just five minutes. You, f- f- forget all you folks that are super glued to your seat. You wouldn't get up if Jesus came. That's fine. You just, just, just stay where you are. That's fine. I'll talk to you wackos down here, okay? You, 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 listen, you young people, you kids, I'm not trying to tell you to be rude, but look, you need to get sick of going to a church where nothing happens. You need to get sick of not talking in tongues but once every year. You need to get sick of not praying through on a regular basis. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mind. Somebody needs to shout at me. I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. I don't know how long. I don't know how. I will come out of this. And when I come out of this, I'm going to have a testimony. I, I can't hardly get to my sermon. You people have flipped out. Do you understand? Here's what the sermon is about. When God got sick of the rampant sin on the planet, he sent the flood. When God got sick of all that crazy stuff going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, he sent the fire. When God got sick of the devil dominating people and beating them up with disease and fear and anxiety and worry, he came himself. When heaven got sick of what was going on the earth, the incarnation took place. He said, I'm come down that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. I've come to set the captives free. I've come to loose people. I've come to bless people. I've come to heal people. I've come to transform people. I'm sick of what's been going on. I've come to defeat the devil. Yeah. Am I making sense yet? See, the only way you get saved is you get sick of being in sin. Yeah. Now, I, I, my last time I'm going to talk to you guys, I'm going to leave you alone. But I was in a motel two weeks ago preaching a conference and sitting there and in the lobby waiting to go. The Holy Ghost spoke to me. And I know some people don't believe that. That's your problem. And the Lord spoke to me and here's what he said to me. I never think of this once. He said, suicide. And I went, whoa, suicide. And I wrote it down on a note. I said, okay, lay it on me. What's suicide? Suicide. He said, tell my people, people who commit suicide are just like the people who experience salvation. They both get sick of life. The only difference is the person who commits suicide throws away their life. The person who experiences salvation finds my life. I won't be preaching here no more. You're safe. Man, I looked at it. I said, oh, my God. So when I looked at these scriptures and I saw all these illustrations about all these people that got sick of stuff. See, you can, being sick of something, frustrated, disgusted, angry, upset about it, becomes a catalyst for change. Now, you know if you've made some spiritual progress or you changed from one level to another, it was only because you became sick of where you were. Oh, man. I appreciate all your sweet people. I'm asking for the folks down there that I can't see. I, Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes the only way you're going to get healed is when you become sick of being sick. I'm sick of this cancer. I'm sick of this diabetes. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of that. I'm sick of emphysema. I'm sick of lung. 
you got to get sick of it because everybody I find in the Bible who gets sick of it, who came to Jesus said, I can take care of that right now. I'll fix that in a minute. Bible said they were sick of divers diseases. That means different, many different kinds of diseases. So I'd like to ask you sweet people in Texas, now what are you sick of? I'll tell you what the curse in Pentecost is. It ain't putt-putt golf. It ain't the internet. It ain't TV. No, it ain't. It ain't any of that stuff. It's that we become adjusted to a sphere of second-rate spirituality. We accept business as usual. Now, I don't want to hurt these preachers' feelings, and I just told them I'm not going to look at them again, but I'm looking at you. If your preacher can't preach good, why don't you pray for him? Why don't you get in the prayer room and say, hey, plug that guy in. He's dead as a hammer. He couldn't preach his way out of a Howard Johnson's bathroom. The door was unlocked. You can laugh all you want to. I wouldn't sit under some ministries. I wouldn't. I'll tell you why. Because you can't rise above your leadership. If your leadership is low spiritual, you can't be high spiritual. But if you'll get a hold of the horns of the altar and start asking God to anoint your man, anoint your lady, inspire them. Why? Because they'll bless you and they'll be sick of what they are and you'll be, woo, and you'll be sick of what you are. You're not going to get free from Satan's torments putting up with that dirt bag and tolerating that junk. I know I'm not a virgin voice. I've tolerated things in my life that I should have got sick of a long time ago. And then finally you just reach the point, the end of the rope, and you say, I'm sick of this. I ain't putting up with this no more. And that, that sweet woman, Hannah, she went to that temple. She said, I'm sick of being barren. I want a baby. And I can't get Flash to help me. It ain't working with us. So there's something wrong in me. I said, Lord, I want the supernatural to touch me. Now, now I'm, I'm sorry to keep looking at you guys because uh, there's a real need over here. <laughs> that if, if you read the rest of that chapter, it's powerful. You know the story. Eli, he's a big fat slob. He's a tub of lard. He's sitting there and he's as spiritual as a dead frog. And he turns around and damns and condemns the girl because she's praying and her lips are moving and there's no voice. He says, put away the booze. Put away the thunderbird wine. What's the matter with you? Come on. Stop that. He goes, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have poured my heart out unto the Lord. I want a child from God. And Eli says, the Lord grant you your request. Now watch. The Lord grant you your request. Next verse. I'm going to slap you hard right now. And she was no more sad. She had a promise, but she wasn't pregnant yet. But she acted like she was, go like she was going to get pregnant and give birth to a miracle. Ah! Bible said she was no more sad. Why? She wasn't pregnant, but she was persuaded. That's what God's trying to help you with your district, Rev, to get you persuaded that the answer is on its way, that your victory is on its way, that your deliverance and your change is on its way. So you got to act like it's already happened before it happened. I will bless the Lord at all times. Sometimes you got to act crazy. Now, I'm all for protocol, but sometimes you just got to slap protocol in the head and just start acting like a crazy fool. Sometimes you got to just take a risk. You just got to step out and say, I've had enough of this trash. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sick of this. I, I, I don't know whether you're hearing me. Do you realize, I'm sorry to keep looking at you guys. I'm drawn to you guys. You guys got spiritual needs over here. Uh, do you realize that we enjoy the wonderful United States of America because those colonists got sick of the tyranny of Britain? Taxation without representation? Guess what? If you get sick of something, you can give birth to a revolution. You can give birth to an insurrection. What 
what's going to happen to the Pentecostal movement if this district decides I'm sick of business as usual. I'm sick of tolerating stuff. I'm going to get a hold of God. I'm going to get a blessing. Woo! I'm going to get a blessing from God. I'm going to change my church. I don't want to be rude to these preachers and all you preachers, but I'm going to tell you, saints, you have a lot of power. You, you, you can force your preacher to get spiritual. Yes, you can. You can say, now, Lord, I'm praying for stupid this morning, and I ask you to just help old stupid because he couldn't preach. For... If, he, if he was on trial for being a preacher, he'd be found innocent. I had some nincompoop the other day ask me, he said, Brother Arnold, I'd like to preach like you. I said, so would a lot of people. He said, I want your anointing. I said, now you're talking like a fool. I said, you want my anointing? I said, easy. Fight my lions. Kill my giants. Weep my tears. Learn how to deal with hatred and rejection and resentment. I don't want to be rude, but I've been beat up by the best in this movement. I got news for you. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not throwing in the towel. I got some things I need to do for God. So you just throw your criticism all you want to. But I'm still praying. I'm still preaching. I'm still studying. I'm still worshiping. I'm still giving. And if you're going through a pity party right now, it's time to get sick of it. I think the worst picture you can ever put on the internet is a bunch of Pentecostals doing this. Well, he hurt my feelings. Well, she didn't say hello. Well, they didn't. Oh, give me a break. Get a life, will you, if I'm crying out loud. Bunch of wussy-fied Pentecostals. in the name of God you couldn't take me out with a bazooka you laugh all you want to I'm not bragging you couldn't take me out I've been through all kinds of hell I've been through problems I've been through sickness I've been through disease I've been through it when I didn't have enough money to pay my bills I passed at a church that couldn't even afford to pay me when I first took it I went through all kinds of there's all kinds of sin and adultery and crazy junk that happened in that church over the years 36 years later things paid off got a great church you'd be surprised brother Kraft told me years ago Jeffrey you'd be surprised how far you can go if you keep walking Sometimes you got to look at that next mountaintop and say, I know I'm tired. I know my buns is dragging. I know I'm sweating in my sneakers, but I think I can reach the next hill. You may be going slow, but just keep going. You may be weeping, woo, but just keep going. You don't know like I know. Is anybody here, you've ever had God answer a prayer? Has he ever brought you through? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord for just a minute. almost there you understand if you're guilty if you're in sin if you committed something you shouldn't have done listen to what David said in Psalms 32 3 through 5 you don't have to get the scripture I can quote it he says said thy hand was heavy upon me my moisture dried up my bones roared now that's talking from a that's sounding from a guy who's talking under heavy conviction he said, thy hand was heavy upon me. Listen to me, baby cakes. 
If God puts his hand on you in conviction, you are special. You don't ever want God to leave you alone. You want God to trouble you. You want God to convict you. You want God to shake you out of your lethargy and out of your mediocrity. And that's what he said, Brother Steve. He said, my moisture dried up. My bones roared. I had no joy. I had no peace. So I made up my mind. I'm sick of this. So I will confess my sin and I will admit I was wrong. And the minute he did it, God said, forgive him. Forgive him. If you will just confess, if you will just admit, God is standing on his tiptoes ready to forgive you for everything. Woo! I'm trying to go as fast as I can. You understand? <laughs> oh, God. I got more sermon than I got time to preach. I... I'd like, I'd like to make a statement to you sweet people. You're so sweet. Listen to me. Don't keep complaining about what you won't confront. And don't keep crying the blues over stuff you keep tolerating. I know what I'm talking about. I've had times in my life I tolerated stuff. Hope it would go away. Did a little praying. Did a little... No, no, you, you can't do that. You got to confront what's driving you crazy. I, I, I wish I could get a couple of thousand people right now to yell at me. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of my level of praise. I'm sick of my level of worship. I'm sick of my commitment to missions. I'm sick of my money I don't give to Tupelo. I'm sick of it. You ain't going to get saved until you get sick of sin. You ain't going to stop sinning until you get sick of falling into the trap. You're not going to stop criticizing till you get sick of being a critic. Any fool can find fault with something. Well, the music's too loud. Well, the preacher's too long. Well, the AC's too cold. You're having a problem with cold air. Where do you get to hell? You can gripe your way into hell, but you won't gripe your way out of hell. The Bible said that Publius was the leader of the land of Melita, and his father was sick of a, of a fever and a bloody flux. And Paul just came in and laid his hands on and said, we'll take care of that right now. Boom. So I want to ask you something, because God has been building this whole camp meeting for three or four days for this moment. That God wants to show the supernatural and the miraculous. Now listen, I don't want to offend nobody's feelings, but listen. You're not going to get very many miracles with a bunch of emotional hoopla. Now, I know we get excited and we think that noise is power and emotion is power. No, 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 no. I was, I, was just in, I was just in Canada. You can call him. Call Raymond Woodward. I was in Canada. And, and, and now, if you're watching on the movies or whatever you're doing, fine. Listen, don't get offended. But when you preach in Canada, it's like preaching to the living dead. I never preached in Canada before. When you preach in Canada, Morel, here's what they do for an hour. You preach till your underwear falls off, and they're just sitting there going. And they're taught, I didn't know that, they're taught in their culture that it's an insult to interrupt the preacher. So they let you preach and preach and preach and preach. And you think, you're not getting the first base. When I finished and gave the altar call, five or six hundred people swam into the altar and blew the place up for 45 minutes, prayed everything through the Holy Ghost. I said, what kind of wackos are these people, man? I mean, you just preach and preach and preach nothing. The minute you give the altar call, yeah. 
Well, they're just out there just jumping around and carrying on. And I'm on the platform up here. And I'm just kind of doing my little two-step. Yeah. And, and this man walks up to me and he says, Brother Arnold. He said, would you pray for my little boy? Now, they're going crazy out there. Up here, it's dead as a hammer. I said, sure. What's the matter with him? Sweet little boy. He looks like a deacon. He's got a little vest, a little tie. He's about four or five years old. He said, my boy was born blind in his left eye. He's missing a part of his pupil, and they can't do anything operation-wise. And I looked at him, and I said, oh, so I have so much class. I just sat my rear end down on the platform. I realize you shouldn't do that if you're a UPC pastor or a preacher. You should have a nice seat that you sit in. But I set my buns on the floor. And I turned around, and I said, come here, little man. And, he, and, and they're all screaming and yelling and carrying on. I'm up here with this little kid. I said, you think if Jesus was here, he would fix your eye? And that little boy said, yes, sir. I said, that's all I need. Now watch, this is as God is my witness. You call him. I turned around. I said, well, now close your eyes. Here's what he did. He went like this. I said, put your hands over your eyes. I said, okay, now we're going to ask the Lord to open your eye. Okay. I put my hand on his on his, on his left eye hand, and I said, now, Lord Jesus, I couldn't heal a headache on a dead frog. I don't have any gifts. I don't have any miraculous anything, but I know that you're the healer, and you're the deliverer, and you don't need a bunch of hoopla. Now, I ask you, please, create something in that little boy's eye. I said, you got a factory full of extra parts that you don't need right now, and you can just send one down here for me, and you can put in his pupil what he needs. Brother Morell, honest as God, I didn't feel nothing. See, that's what our problem is. We're held captive by what we feel. You ain't got to feel nothing. I turned around. I said, now, Lord, open this little boy's eyes in Jesus' name. I pulled my hand back. I said, take your hands down. I said, open your eyes. Now I'm standing here. And I look at him. And I said, all right, now cover your right eye. And he covered his right eye. And I said, okay, now look at me with your left eye. And I went like this. I said, how many fingers do I have up? He said, three. I said, I said, how many fingers do I have up now? He said, two. I said, how many fingers do I have up now? He said, one. I said, Daddy, the Lord just opened your boy's eye. No shout. No. You know what it is? You get sick of it. I'm sick of this. I'm tired of it. I'm fed up with it. I'm, I'm strangling on it. I got to have a change. Now, I appreciate my good friend, Brother Poe, and, and the miracles that God used, and he's got all them great video things, and I don't have any of that. But I was just in California preaching for, for Brother Garcia. I preach every year the Spanish conference out there, and, and the only Spanish I know is Taco Bell. That's all I know. And I preach a Spanish conference, and while I'm preaching, I'm not even done. This lady comes coming down the aisle. She's got this beautiful little girl, I'd say maybe six, seven years old. And, and I'm not even finished preaching, so I had to stop preaching. And I said, what can I do for you, lady? She said, I need you to pray for my daughter. Well, her daughter looked normal to me. I said, well, what's the matter with your daughter? And she pointed down, and she's got this giant brace on her left leg. Honest, Brother Steve, she's got a shoe that's this big. It's some kind of supportive thing for her ankle because her ankle bones don't support her leg even with the thing. I said, what's the matter with her? She said, she's got muscular dystrophy. I said, God didn't give that to her. I said, you lying devil, you. I said, come here, baby. And I got next to her and I prayed for her a little bit. Nothing happened. I said, ah, I can pray better than that. I brought her up next to me and I hugged her and I was crying. I was on her cheek. And she, I would just hold her and I said, now, Lord... Drive this muscular dystrophy out of the little girl's body. She don't need that. She's got her whole life ahead of her. In Jesus' name, make her whole. They leave. I don't see nothing. Find out later they're home missionary pastors in California. So they couldn't be there Sunday. Brother Garcia just called me before I came here on his plane. He said, Brother Arnold, the home missionary couple asked me to Please tell Brother Arnold, thank you for praying for our little girl. I said, well, good. That's great. He said, no, you don't understand. They took the brace off, and they removed the shoe, and she's walking fine. You know why? You get sick of it. You get sick of it. You get to a level of desperation. 
That's going to happen here in the next few minutes. If you get sick of it, if you believe God, God is not a respecter of persons. He'll heal anything and everything that you're able to believe him for. You don't need to feel anything. You just need to believe God for something. I, 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 don't, I, I, I don't mean to be rude or unkind. Is, is A.D. Spears in this building anywhere? Is he here? I don't know. Okay, I was praying for Sister Spears yesterday and praying today and praying for different people that God would heal them. Here's why I felt the Lord spoke to me. Here's what he said to me. I never read this in a book. I didn't steal it from the internet. I'm not on the internet. You ready? Here's what he said. Tell my people, until they get sick of it, they'll never be free of it. Until you get sick of doing drugs, you ain't going to be free of it. Until you're sick of being immoral, you're never going to be free of it. Until you're sick of being carnal and worldly, you're never going to be free of it. You ain't going to come out until you cry out. You got to cry out if you want to, if you want to come out. I, I, I preached long enough. I don't need to preach no more. I was going to have him read some scriptures, but I'll just quote them, okay? The Bible said that Israel was in bondage. Exodus chapter 3. And the Bible said the Lord came down and saw Moses. He said, I have heard the cry of my people. And I have seen their affliction and the brutality of what Egypt is doing. To watch this. Here's the next one. I'll, you got to get a hold of this one. This is the killer right now. He says, and I know their sorrow. It's not enough for him to see what I'm going through and not enough for him to hear my cry. But when God personally says, but I know what you're going through. You got a God that knows what you're going through right now. And he said, and I've come down to deliver them out of Egypt. God is in this house right now and he wants to deliver you out of whatever you're sick of. You, 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 you're missing what I told you before. Expectation is the birthplace for the miraculous. He that comes to God must believe that God is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, whatever you have, there ain't no way I can pray for everybody here. And I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, okay? I, I don't have no magic. I, I, I just don't, I don't have a bzzz. I have people say, if I could get you to pray for me. I said, well, I appreciate that, but I can't fix nobody. I just, I just came out of England. I was in England preaching a general conference for England. And, and a little girl walked up to me. I'm sorry to bother you with all this. And, and walked up to me. And, and if you've ever been in Britain, they can't talk. They're like Australians. Oh, sure. For talk, for. They got a mouth full of marbles. And she says, pastor, pastor. Would you pray for me, Pastor? And I said, Dear God, man, what's the matter with you? He says, said, a, heart, a virus in my ear last year, a virus, and it destroyed my eardrum. I have no eardrum. And I'm thinking, You got more than problems than just an eardrum. And so I'm saying, Oh, God, lucky me. Everybody else gets to pray for a paper cut, a pimple. I got to pray for somebody who's got no eardrum. And so being a man of great faith, I said, uh, wait till I preach a while and then I'll pray for you because faith comes by hearing. God, I got out of this one. <laughs> I'm preaching. First night I preached at General Conference, I almost bought my own tape. Woo! What a preacher. Second night I preached, man, was I impressed. Third night I get ready to preach as dead as a hammer. It's locked up like a corkscrew. I'm trying and trying to preach and preach and I can't preach. I can't get to first base. And the Holy Ghost speaks. Called a little girl, and being a man of faith, I said, Let's sing another song. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost says, Call the little girl. And I said, mm -hmm. Where's that little girl that asked me to pray for? She's in a back row with the missionary. I said, Come on up here. She comes up and stands on the platform. Pretty little girl. I said, Now, this little girl is deaf in her ear. I said, Now, watch. I said, Can you hear me? Yes. I went to the other side. Can you hear me? She can't hear me. I said, now I've done this test to show you this is not Benny Hannon. I'm not going to blow her over. She's really sick. This isn't a scam. She's got no eardrum. 
Now, I can't fix anybody, but I'm going to see if Jesus will fix her. I put my finger in her ear like this, and I said, Now, Lord, I can't fix anything, but you're a healer. You need to make these people know that you love them and you've not changed. Now, open this eardrum in Jesus' name. And I pulled my finger out. I said, I leaned up to her, and I said, Can you hear me? She scared the out of me. She goes, ah! and I go, yeah, and I said, what happened? She said, my ear just popped open. My ear just popped open. Now, I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. People started running up to the platform. Run it up. Pray for me. Pray for me. I started praying for people. I had blind eyes. Had this. Had that. I didn't get nobody healed. I prayed. Men, I slapped them so hard. I prayed and prayed and prayed and talked in tongues. Shook them. Yakaba, yakaba. And I prayed and, and nothing happened. And after about the fifth person, I said, God, what is going on here? He said, it won't work. I said, why? He said, they think this is magic. I said, what? He said, they think you can fix them. I stopped the whole altar call. I said, shut the music down. Stop. Hold it. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost just told me. He said, you people are looking at me like I can fix you. I can't fix anybody. We need to repent, and we need to get our vision on the Lord right now. So they prayed. I'm asking the same of you. They prayed. We went and prayed. The next three people, both of them, all three of them were deaf in both ears. They opened up. Pow, pow, pow. This lady was standing on the end. She wasn't even part of our church. She had these slacks on, and she looked like Kyle Bell the Clown and had all this stuff, and, and she had this giant bowling ball in her slacks. And I well, come down the end, so I said, and, and what's the matter with you, girl? She says, I, I need Jesus to heal me. I said, well, what, what's the matter with you? I, I, the tumor in my stomach, and they can't operate on it. And I need Jesus to fix me. And I said, well, you think he will? He said, I know he will if I can get him to touch me. I said, well, he's in me, so he's going to touch you in just a second. I grabbed that girl's hand, and I said, put your hand on her belly. I said, I'm going to put my hand on your hand. And I put my hand, and I said, now I curse this tumor, and I command it to disappear. As God is my witness, that thing went... Yeah. If you get sick of it... If you get sick of it, if you get fed up with it, if you get tired of it, you can get desperate and determined and you can reach for God right now. Whatever you are sick of, begin to ask God to set you free from that right now. Ask God to turn this thing around. I can't pray for everybody. I'm not a miracle guy. I'm just telling you what the Lord spoke to me. Tell my people there is a blessing when people get sick of it. Now, I know this service has been blowing up two or three times, and I don't mean to kill anything, but I, I, need, I need you people back here. You're, you're standing there looking at something. You need right now, every one of you sweet people, you need to get sick of some area in your life. If your church is not growing, you need to get sick of it. If you're not winning people to God, you need to get sick of it. If you're not praying in the Holy Ghost every once in a while, you need to get sick of it. If, if you don't have a lot of joy, you need to get sick of it. If you need to... If, Come on, get beside yourself right now and get sick of whatever is holding you hostage and don't put up with it anymore. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? The only reason we have the story of Gomer is because Gomer... She was a whore. She was popping out kids. She was like a slut. She was a nasty chick. The Lord said, those kids are born of illegitimacy. I will not bless their children. So he says, I will seek my lovers, and I will pursue them. Hosea 1. And he says, and I will go after my lovers who give me my oil and my flax and my wool. And the Lord said, really? Okay, I'll block up your way, and I'll hedge your way, and I'll put a wall in front of you so that you can't find your lovers now. He says, when I do that, then will Gomer say, 
I will return unto my first husband, for it was better me then than it is now. You know what he just said? I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this. I, I hope I haven't killed this service. No, no, no. Do you, do you, do you under, we love to tell the story of the prodigal son, if there is such a thing. And he's in the mud pit, and he's talking to the pigs. And he said, the servants in my father's house have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise, and I will go to my father, and I will apologize. You know what he just said? I'm sick of this. I'm sick of the pigs. I'm sick of the mud. I'm sick of the guilt. I'm sick of the failure. I'm sick of the shame. I'm sick of all this stuff. Now, come on. Come on. We need to start praying right now. We need to ask God to help us to make us sick of whatever is holding us hostage. Come on. I, I know I've got a word from the Lord for this conference, for this camp meeting. I don't know what to do with you people. You're all just packed in here. I can't, I can't pray for you all. all. All I can ask you to do is you need to pour your heart out. Hannah got sick of being barren, and she ended up producing miracle children. You need to be sick of not being a soul winner. You need to be sick of not being a Bible teacher. You need to be sick of just status quo. You know, the, brother, brother Judd, you know the tragedy of mediocre people? They're always at their best. And, and the curse of Pentecost is mediocrity. Now, I know you people are waiting for us to bring all these preachers down here so they're going to pray for you. I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to pray a blanket prayer over everybody. I'm supposed to pray for somebody tonight has got some kind of inoperable cancer. They've asked me to come pray. I'll pray for you. I don't know what God will do, but I'll pray for you. But right now, I'm praying. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask you to loose the anointing and the gifting of God in this house. I ask you to somehow create a hungering and a thirsting back into the hearts and lives of your people. Create a desire for them to be spiritual, to be dynamic, to be powerful, not to be status quo, not to be average. Lord, I pray that you would heal the sick people, that you would touch folks that are hurting with diseases, with, with growths, with tumors, with diabetes, with heart problems, that you would loose the power of the Holy Ghost into these people's lives and make them sick of what they're sick of. All my Pentecostal life since I've been preaching, I've prayed this prayer. I've asked God, make me the greatest preacher in Pentecost. Not so I can get my picture taken, but somebody's got to be great. I might as well be great. Why would you not want to be great for God? Why would you not want to be powerful for God? Why would you not want to be super spiritual for God? Come on, come on. There's, there's a working of the Holy Ghost here. There's a moving of the Spirit of God here. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, get fed up with it. Get sick of it. You're not going to get out till you cry out. You're not going to get free from it till you get sick of it. You're not going to get up until you're fed up. Come on! Come on! Woo! Come on! You don't need me to pray for you. You can pray for yourself. He that cometh to God must believe that God is. Woo! Come on, you can start a movement. Come on, you can start a movement. Is there a spiritual Rosa Parks in the house? Is there a spiritual Martin Luther King in the house? Is there a spiritual Mahatma Gandhi in the house? Woo! Something's happening. Something's happening. Something's happening.
get to work Even when I don't feel it to work it You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it to work it Even when I don't feel it to work it You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Stop working. You never stop.